Pastor Zillinger's Daily Devotions. The Lessons for the Sixth Sunday of Pentecost. From Psalm 30, verse 3. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Um, This is talking about people, uh, how the Lord restores our life from uh, when we would go to hell. That's in the Old Testament. That's Sheol. If you didn't have Christ as a Savior yet, uh, they were always separated. After Christ dies and rises, we don't go to hell because we could go be with him. Uh, But it's also a messianic one. This is a messianic psalm where he points to Christ and says that God did not deliver Jesus Christ to hell because he was bad. He actually allowed Jesus to go down to hell as a victor, that he didn't go down there as somebody uh, desperate, but as one who said, I have conquered death. I didn't deserve it. I paid the price for it. And now look at my resurrection, which is an amazing thing. Lamentations 325. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. First, are you seeking God? And are you seeking God where he may be found in his word, in the sacraments? Those are the means of grace where he has given us. So oftentimes we seek God in clever music or we seek God in nature or we seek God in our devotions, our personal lives, all places where we might see God. But a God sighting of where God truly is at is in word and sacrament. I see him in his word. I see him in his sacrament. That's where he may be found. And now I wait for him because this is what he tells me. This is what he gives me. This is the grace I live in. Second Corinthians 8, 2 through 3. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord. So a few things with this. I'm talking about stewardship, and I like this verse. One is, is that um, when you find yourself in severe affliction, uh, continue to give and have the uh, joy of giving. Um, I kind of think of this as well as that, you know, you might be sick and you might be dying, and God might say tonight, hey, you can, you're, you're coming with me to the kingdom. And what was all that money in your bank account, all those things for? Are you being a good steward of the things? Are you giving joyfully with this? Not meaning saying you give up everything and go be a hermit somewhere, but I'm saying pay attention to it, your sickness and in health. The other is, is that they gave of their means and beyond their means. So that means that there was a portion they said, I'm going to set aside a portion of my means and I'm going to give to the Lord, give to his people. I'm going to give through his people. I'm going to give for specific instances of things, a wealth of generosity. And I think that would be a wonderful moniker for any church, especially our church, is to say, we are so generous. We have a wealth of generosity because people love each other and people love others. Mark 5, 21 through 43. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Mark has a kind of a triplicate of things that happens, and they're kind of mashed all together in this, where you have somebody, a woman who comes up, and you have a synagogue ruler and his daughter having a death thing, and it's kind of all crammed together in Mark, which seems that it doesn't make any sense. But I want you to pay attention to the reactions of people. That's what's driving this. And so we have the woman where she is kind of, I want to say, scolded because she reached out in faith to heal um, her bleeding disease. We have the synagogue ruler who thinks that um, Jesus is coming to heal his daughter as she's living, but she dies. And now what? And there's this hopelessness that happens with the main characters. And I can imagine this as a father myself, is that I know Jesus can heal, but he's not here yet. And my son or my daughter dies. Now what? And Jesus turns to him and says, don't fear, just believe. Trust me, I can do even better than this. Because so oftentimes we think, well, Christ can do amazing things, but can he do the miraculous? Can he do the beyond what my understanding is? Can I even ask for something like this? It's like, yes, don't fear, trust. And so the father hears this. He overhears the conversation and Jesus turns to him and says, don't be hopeless. I'm going to give you some hope. I'm going to give you something amazing. I'm going to give you resurrection. This is amazing. Now, I imagine the other end of the story, everybody who knew this daughter in that household, everybody, the apostles, the whole town, things like this, would have heard this story, even without the father saying it. And then the father comes in and says even more. and says, I want to tell you about Jesus because I've got my little child back. They're alive. They once were dead. There is resurrection in this man. Listen to him. Follow him. That's what I think is for us. Every day we need to be clinging to Jesus, too, of that new resurrected life we have in our baptisms. The Lord bless your day as well as your week.